Now it's time to use these cool electron modules for building a good working three-stage amplifier. Amplifier consists of three stages. The pre-amplifier, end amplifier and the speaker box. All cubes are arranged in a logical way from input to output. So, let's start with the input. We use the DIN modeler. This DIN modeler has a connector at the side where we can connect our smartphone or music device. The center of the DIN modeler is grounded for easy assembly. Let's put it in the left bottom corner. So, now we need to adjust our input. So, we need a potentiometer. This is the potentiometer cube. It has three connections and the shaft to adjust the potentiometer. So we put it this way. Right, now we need to connect the DIN module to our potentiometer. So we use a corner block. These sides are connected with each other. Now we need also to ground the potentiometer. So we use the ground block. This is the ground symbol. The side and the bottom of the block are connected to the metal board. So, to separate our input to our first amplifier, we need a capacitor. And we use this capacitor of 0.47 microfarads. It can be mounted either way. So, now to make connections to our first transistor, we use a T-block. has three connections connected with each other. So, now we are going to use our first transistor. It is an NPN transistor. So, this is the base of the transistor, the emitter and the collector. And this is the transistor. So, we put it this way. Now we need also to ground the emitter of our transistor, so we use also a ground block. Okay. Now the emitter is grounded. To bias a transistor, we need a resistor. So let's use the 100k resistor. This is the 100k resistor cube, and it's connected at this and that side. We mount it here in our circuit. So, now we need some more connections, for that reason we are going to use some T-blocks. This is a T-block. We put it here, and this goes to the next stage of our amplifier. So, we need to make connections here. We use two more T-blocks. As you might see now, the current can flow through the resistor to the base and the bias is in now. Now, this needs a feedback resistor, so we use a corner block here. This is the corner block. And we put it this way. So we add two resistors here to make feedback later on. We use a 10k and a 5.6k resistor. These can be mounted this way or even that way. It's the same. Later on we will add some more blocks here, but that's for later. Let's continue with it. Right, now to make our transistor work, we need to connect it to the power rail by using a resistor. We use a 4.7k resistor and we place it here. Now current can flow through this resistor, through the 100k resistor, to the base of our transistor and it should work. Now we need a voltage divider here, so we are going to use some wiring first. We use the T block here, followed by a straight line block. Now current can flow through our transistor. This T block, in fact, it is just a straight wire between these connections. Okay, now we have to use a resistor for our voltage divider. We use a 220 ohm resistor and this is the way it is connected. Okay, 
let's continue now with the wiring. Okay, now we're going to use a T block. Now, if the power is applied here, the resistor is a filter for a circuit of our pre amplifier. We smoothen it, we need some capacitor, so we use the 100 microfarad capacitor. Pay attention to correct it properly. Plus and a minus. And now we need it to ground the minus of our capacitor, so we use the ground block. Now the resistor acts as a ripple filter and the capacitor stores the energy. So let's continue with powering the circuit. We need a straight line block here. Followed by the power source. We can use the battery block of 9 volts. It's the minus and the plus. Or we can use the bridge rectifier. It has the same connections. Plus and minus. And this is the connection for a power supply for the rest of it. But in this case we are going to use the battery. So we snap it together here. If we want to, to work, make our circuit work, we need to ground the negative pole of the battery. We can use a ground block later on. We put it at the side. Now let's move on to the next stage of our amplifier. First of all, we could use a straight line block for our power supply. Now, to separate the second amplifier from the first, we need decoupling capacitor. We use the capacitor of 10 microfarads and we pay attention to mount it properly with the plus this way. Just pushing the blocks a bit here. Now, to connect the capacitor to the second transistor, we firstly are going to use a cross block. This cross block has four connections, and each connection is connected with each other. The dot. We place it here. Now, now we're going to use the second transistor. It's also an NPN transistor. This is the base, the emitter, and the collector. We put it here. Alright. Now we need also to grant our emitter of our transistor. So we use the ground block. The next step is to add a capacitor between ground and base of our transistor to avoid oscillations. We use the 47 nanofarad capacitor. And it can be mounted this way or the other way, it's the same. So we're gonna mount it this way. And we use a ground block to ground it to the chassis. To bias our second transistor, we need also a resistor. So we're going to use the 100K again. It's a 100K resistor. And we mount it here. We continue with some wiring. We use the straight line block. And now we have to use some T connections to make the bias work. We use the T blocks and we place it in this way. Now, the current can flow through the 100K resistor to a bias our transistor. That should work. This will continue to the next stage. This time, we come using the lamp. The lamp is only used as a small resistor. So, now, to couple our second transistor to the third transistor, we need a decoupling capacitor to separate the power supply. We use the 10 microfarad capacitor and pay attention to the plus. We mount it so this way. Now we need to connect a resistor here and we place a 1.5k resistor. Now, 
let's connect this to the third transistor so we're going to use some wiring first this is a D block to connect the speaker afterwards okay this is a third transistor and we could put it here so the two transistors are in series now We're gonna use a T block here to connect the base. And we need also a bias here, so we're going to use a bias resistor of 100k. To connect this to the power supply, we need a T block again, so we are gonna use it. So now, this is the connection of the speaker, so we need also a T-block here to connect our speaker box to the plus parser battery. This is the corner block. Finally, time to add the speaker. So, you see, this is a T with a transformer connected this way. We're gonna place it here. Now, to connect our speaker box to the amplifier, we need to use a capacitor of 100 microfarads and pay attention to the bus. We put it here in our circuit. Next, we have to use a corner block to connect the capacitor to the speaker box. So, now it's time for the second phase. We need to make a feedback connection. So stay tuned. Although our amplifier is working now, it has stability issues and distorted sound. To resolve these problems, we're going to use a feedback loop between the output and the input to make the circuit stable. So, for this reason, we're going to use a special electron cube and it has two connections. One at the right and one at the left. The right connection makes contact to the circuit by the metal plate at the side of the cube. The left connection is a connection to the ground. So, now we can have to add a wire. This wire has two little jacks millimeters and they can easily be inserted in the holes on top of the cube. For instance we are going to use the right connection to make connection to the circuit. We put it next to the resistors. The other end of the wire we have to insert between the cubes. So we are going to use a special plug. This plug is very thin and can easily slit between two cubes without breaking the circuit and making contact. Now this is the hole on top of it where we can introduce the wire. Now we're going to slide it between adjacent cubes and the contact is made and our feedback loop is working. This is how it works. When the input rises, the output rises also but the feedback lowers the input, so stabilizing the overall gain of our amplifier. Don't forget to put the ground block to the battery to be now. The input of our amplifier must be connected to a smartphone or an mp3 player, so we can actually hear the music through the electron system. For this reason, we use a special cable. This cable has a DIN plug at one end, which we can introduce in the DIN model. The other end has a 3.5mm mini jack for our mp3 player. But first, let's turn the volume completely down. So, like this. Now, let's go for the next round. 